Hello, everyone. Um, so, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so my name is Juman Nentamarike. I'm the um, CEO and founder of Sahara Ventures. I've been working in the innovation ecosystem for some time now. And uh, I started working with Boone Innovation Hub, the first innovation hub in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. And uh, from there, I worked for like four years, and then I ventured out to support establishment of other innovation spaces across the country. And right now, I'm running my own business, but also I'm managing an accelerator in the called Sahara Accelerator. So today, I'm on, on, on business incubators. But among, um, among other things, I would also like to discuss a bit about the innovation ecosystem and how other players in the ecosystem can support you in terms of uh, finding proper finances for your, for your, for your business incubator. Um, because if, if you want to run um, a business incubator as a business, you have to think beyond an entrepreneur. You have to think beyond someone coming to the space and contributing for the service. Um, just running a program which allows you to take equity from the startup. So, so um, to start with a general overview of the innovation spaces, and uh, the focus here will be to focus more on the on the on the key pillars of the innovation space. What does it make, uh, or what does it what does it need to run a functional innovation space? Innovation space, it's yet doesn't have like a proper definition, academic definition, but it collects all these uh, initiatives from tech hubs, maker spaces, labs, co-creation spaces, incubators, living labs, M labs, impact labs, etc. Define them, you can all uh, call them innovation spaces. Uh, in Dar es Salaam, we have different innovation spaces. We have two maker spaces. One is called Boonica Space, and the other one is called Stick Lab. We have two incubators, one at the University of Dar es Salaam, and the other one is called the Technoama Business Incubator. Uh, we used to have an accelerator called Tino. Um, this is the same issue that we'll be discussing, the future sustainability issues that have stopped the operations because we are private funded. Uh, um, today. Um, an innovation space, um, from my experience, because I don't have PhD in running innovation spaces, is composed of three key pillars. So the first pillar is the community and, and programs and activities that you run and coordinate in the space. And the third pillar is the management team, the team which is running the innovation space. Uh, the community is more of the beneficiary of the space, people who are benefiting from the service that you're offering. The program and activities, these are the activities that you have designed and the program that you have structured so that to help you run the space and make it active. And the management team is the people behind um, the brain of running the space. And then um, to get into details into the, into the, into the space pillar, so the community is more of the beneficiaries of the space. These are the most important component of the space. Um, uh, the most important thing in the innovation space is the community, people who are using the space. Because you can always move around with people. I mean, you can always change the venue for the space, but it's very difficult to develop a community which is active and engaging and productive. So, and it is more than just uh, people who are using the space physically. It's about people who are following you online. It's about uh, people who want to mentor your startup. It's about people who are following on what you do. It's about people who leverage value. It. Um, and the community needs to meet, needs to engage, and need to interact professionally and, and socially so that um, you build a, a strong connection. It should be diverse. And also, as a community, you should have some sort of an identity or a culture which defines you. For example, when I was working with Buni, uh, any member of Buni, we used to call them Buningas. So we share the same values. We love entrepreneurship. We love innovation. 
Um, we love technology, so those passions and those things tend to connect us together. So the most important pillar of the space, to make money using the space, first of all, you have to make sure you have a very nice community. Community with skills, community with passion, community with discipline. And then the second pillar is, 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 uh, is, uh, is a programs and activities that you have in the space. Because if you don't have proper activities and programs in the space, starting to think about how you want to finance in your space is becoming even very difficult. Because if the activities and programs that you run into your space doesn't create um, a way for you to generate income or to run your space sustainably, then it's, it's very difficult to even think about doing anything that can be able to generate money to you. So activities are mostly short time. These are the stuff that you do day to day. Sometimes they come in and plant. Maybe uh, a person is visiting your space and then you prepare a fireside chat with that person. That can be an activity. And some of them, they are structured and then they can be occurring like monthly activity, let's say a startup green or uh, mobile Monday or entrepreneurship forums. So these can be act recurring activities. And then your program can be uh, long-term program and short-term programs. For example, uh, when I was working at Buni, we used to have four core programs. We used to have internship program, which we are doing with uh, universities. We used to have a mentorship program. It's more of a pre-incubation program for early stage startups. We used to have a community outreach program where we go to universities and recruit individuals with brilliant startup ideas so that we can uh, mentor them at Boone Innovation Hub. And then we used to have one program, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, we, we used to call it a Boone Makerspace program, specifically for people who are passionate about electronics and, and, and making, providing a platform for them to build um, products. So, Programs are very important because with programs, you can then be able to search for partners from both public and private sector. Some of these uh, partners can be willing um, um, to support the program in terms of giving you funds to run the program, in terms of looking for other partners to support the program, in terms of taking the output of the program and using it on what they do. So you can even start to do uh, service outsourcing and skills outsourcing using programs. And um, programs usually are guided by the themes. And um, for example, uh, our themes were innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. So anything which you were designing um, in one way or the other was following on, on that specific areas. So for example, you can, you can, you can um, through innovation, you can come up with a mecha space and try to do rapid prototyping for different ideas that are coming out from different clients. And then uh, for the technology, let's say you can run a tech bootcamp uh, for a specific client. Let's say maybe IBM is coming in with a new product in the market and they're looking to sell it in your country or in your city. And then you can tell them, hey, let's run um, a two weeks boot camp to inform uh, tech guys from corporate sectors about your product. And then um, around entrepreneurship theme, then we used to do the same thing, maybe partnering with a private bank or a local telecom company and help them to run a competition so that they can build their brand or as part of their corporate social responsibilities. So <clears throat> another thing, uh, another key pillar of an innovation space is the management team. So to run a space which can be able to raise fund and to run it into the business, you need a very strong team. Um, you need a team which is very dedicated to the community. You need a team that can uh, design activities. You need a team that can search for partners. And this, this, this is very important. So since running a space, you need to bootstrap and work with minimum resources possible. So always remember, it is not about the number of the people um, you have in your team, but it is about how you define their roles as, a, as, as your team members. Uh, and multiple roles can be assigned uh, to a single dedicated person, and then it can have the same impact compared to hiring three people and they don't know what they're doing in the space. Uh, the team should connect with the community and must have people's skills. So um, running an innovation space is like 
uh, running a bar or a nightclub. People tend to interact with the service you offer. People go to the nightclubs and bars which have a good music, uh, which have a good food, which have a good quality services. So it's the same thing like running an innovation space. People are looking at what kind of value are you leveraging to them. So your team should be able to understand who are your key partners, key contributors, and key complementers on what you do, and how can you be able to um, deliver value to all this beyond the entrepreneur. So if in your ecosystem there's a telecom company and you ask yourself, how can we tap into this value chain and be their partner when they're launching the next product? Uh, if there is um, a public institution which is working around entrepreneurship, you can ask yourself, like, how next time when they want to run the entrepreneurship program, we can partner with them and do it together with them? Because uh, by leveraging value, by showing that you have direct value, then people um, can develop interest. Um, can develop interest on 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 things that you are you are you are you are, you are doing. Um, so there's a like a small exercise here. What are the three pillars of the innovation space? You can um, find your own time and try to uh, answer those key questions. And um, so right now we are moving to uh, our second point. So as I said, the purpose of the first part was just to try to make you understand uh, the, key component of the, the key component of the innovation system. And I think um, you have managed to grab some of those key components. So, before you even think about financing, you have to understand what is the role of the incubator in the ecosystem. In this, you need to be thinking on uh, on uh, on what role inc incubators play in the ecosystem, and how do you link activities that incubator is doing with what is happening into the ecosystem? Because if you want to make if you want to make um, if you want to create a business or channel for business to flow into your spaces, you have to know what other people are doing in the ecosystem. Because if you don't know what other people are doing in the ecosystem, then there's no value that will be leveraging to anyone, and hence you'll be working in silo, and hence nobody will be working with you, and hence you'll never be able to generate any kind of income. So um, what is an incubator? With an online definition of an incubator is simply um, um, often sponsored by private company or municipal entities. What they're trying to say here is more of an incubator can be private owned or it can be public owned. Uh, most of the incubators in Africa, uh, they're either coming from educational institutions uh, like universities, they tend to pilot their own incubators. And sometimes public institutions, for example, in Tanzania, Commission for Science and Technology Tanzania, uh, they played a crucial role for the establishment of um, Boone Innovation Hub. So the main goal of the incubator is to create and grow young businesses by providing them with um, necessary support, financial and, uh, and, uh, and, and technical service. So you have to, to, to define yourself, and this is very, very important, which part of the ecosystem um, you are trying to serve. Do you want to serve early stage businesses and transform them into bigger businesses? Or do you want to work with individual at completely early stage with just ideas who are looking to form new businesses? So the incubator in the ecosystem are looking to work with scalable businesses. So in the incubator, is not a place where you go and test your idea. In an incubator, you go when you have a business which someone is already working. Maybe you have few current. Maybe you have tested your model, and then you're looking to scale it. That is when you go to, to an incubator. So an incubator is a place where you go after you go to a co-creation space, or maybe after you attend a short-term acceleration program, and afterward you feel now uh, maybe uh, I have a very clear sense of what I'm doing, I have a very clear sense of who are my partners, I have a very clear sense of who are my customers, and I'm looking to scale now to the next stage. That is the time you should go to an incubator, or oh, that's what... Um, an incubator manager should be looking or scouting for people like that instead of working with people totally from the scratch. So um, the role of tech hubs, makerspace labs, co-creation space and accelerator living hub 
all these guys can be a feeder to a proper incubation program. So uh, co-creation spaces are there to create the right kind of people to be incubated by incubators. Um, when we were running Boone Innovation Hub, what we were doing in the beginning was to try as much as possible to replicate what everyone else in the ecosystem is doing. But at some point of time, we sat down and say, hey, guys, it seems like we're duplicating the effort. What value can we create to the incubators and accelerator? So we totally decided to focus just to individuals with ideas who are looking to work with ideas to form new businesses. And once they have new businesses, then we are encouraging them to go to accelerators and incubation programs so that they can scale to the, to the, to the, to the, to the next stage. So um, incubator focus on early stage businesses and not ideas. So if you have an idea, I will advise you to go to a co-creation space, find a partner, try it out, uh, be very um, okay to fail, just fail, fail fast, fail quick, and, and fail reasonable. Um, so this, this uh, the, the diagram in front of you is, uh, is, uh, is a journey of an entrepreneur before joining the incubation program. So this is what I was saying. Um, usually to scout a good entrepreneur, you start with the community outreach activities. This can be the uh, programs or the activities that you do at the space, from the trainings, from the outreach activities from the universities. This, those could be hackathons, this could be boot camps. And then once these guys come to the space, they understand and then they develop passion with the space, you can tell them to join activities or programs such as internship program, volunteering at the space, while looking for their potential next partner to form the startup with. And once they have a very clear understanding of what they do, maybe they're working on, a state, on, a, on an idea, but it's still at very early stage, then you can encourage them to join a mentoring program that you are running at the space. So the mentoring program is aiming at preparing them, first of all, to understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Uh, it encourages them to have a proper discipline of being entrepreneur. It encourages them to be able at least to answer basic questions about their product or the service they're looking to offer, their customers, their market, their value delivery channels, their unique value proposition and stuff like that. Once it is very structured on what they're working on, and then you can encourage them to join an incubator. Um, some of the activities and programs that tend to differentiate between the incubator and a normal co-creation space, um, it includes um, access to experts and legal services, business development and growth acceleration, access to scaling fund and, and VCs. These are the services that a business incubator is offering. Even if that's what you do at the end. So, so this, these, are, um, these are the services that an incubator is offering. And if you're just running a co-creation space, you'll focus more on ideation, co-working, co-creation activities, events, community meetup, basic trainings, seminars and workshops, is, is purely aiming at building the foundation of someone becoming an entrepreneur. The reason I'm trying to give you a difference between the innovation space and the incubator is because it's kind of different in Africa. Uh, if you tend to replicate models of Y Combinator or Techstar, all these like high reputed uh, global accelerator, they might not work in Africa because um, we are dealing with different kind of entrepreneur. Uh, and sometimes we are working with minimum resources possible. And sometimes it might take years for you to be able to define yourself in terms of what kind of value are you offering to an entrepreneur. So understanding these differences is crucial if you want to run your space in a sustainable way. And if you want to develop a business model so that you can be running a space which is generating income. As I said from the beginning, uh, to run a space sustainably in Africa, uh, taking equity cannot be the main way of generating income to your space. You need to think beyond an entrepreneur. You need to think beyond monthly payment and office charges. You need to think on different ways you can be able to raise money. And understanding these services and to whom you can deliver these services, it is crucial 
because some of these services can be delivered even to people who are not entrepreneurs. Some of these services can be delivered to corporate partners. Some of these services can be delivered to public partners. Some of these services can be delivered to NGOs. So you need to understand what services are you offering, to whom are you offering it, so that it can be able to help you generate um, in, enough income for your space. For the purpose of time, some of the services, I won't go through them, but the gray area of this presentation, it shows activity that can be offered by both incubators and of course any other innovation spaces. So the core focus of the incubator is telling and growth of startup. But the core focus of co-creation spaces is the other innovation spaces is capacity building, skills development, and the community. So the innovation space is mainly focusing on the community and developing the community as a whole, but the incubator is mainly focusing on developing a startup as an individual to take it to the next stage. So even the program and the service you're offering, they are focusing more on a specific startup. But for the space, you're focusing more on developing programs that can help the community. Um, so there's a small exercise here. Um, feel free to take it on your own time. It's just a question uh, trying to check whether you guys have been following what I've been saying. And um, again, try to help you to reflect on what we've been talking about. Um, we are jumping into Unit 3 now which is very, very important, which is like the, um, the backbone of our discussion here today. So in Unit 3, we'll be speaking about beyond equity and membership fees. I know like every time we think about funding the spaces, funding incubators, funding co-creation spaces, we immediately jump into equity because this is a model we have been running. Uh, this is a model which has been covered a lot if you or to uh, um, process application programs, Nesta DIY toolkit, Nesta acceleration program, all those resources will tell you like these are the best ways to raise money to run an accelerator. But again, not much has been done in this side of Africa and what on what kind of models tend to work because some of these models are very difficult to work in this part of the world. Um, for a startup to exit here might take years. So you as an incubator or co-creation space manager, you cannot wait for three years um, to raise money for you to be able to pay rent on your first year. So um, what are the financing strategies for incubators and spaces beyond equity and, uh, and, and membership fees? Um, finance, financing spaces and incubators is never easy. And that's why most of the spaces are getting closed um, a lot of spaces, some of them we are doing really good in Africa. They are creating a lot of impact to the community. And some of these guys who are running this space are still our friends and we share experience with them. And up to now, the traditional means of taking um, equity and collecting membership fees, it seems to be failing us. So we need to start thinking outside, taking equity and membership fees as a main model of raising funds for our spaces. Um, technically, having equity means you have to stake in your business, which you're helping to build and grow. Uh, in some other part of the world, this might be very easy because usually um, all that you do is to offer space and a, a little bit of, uh, of uh, a seed fund to help this startup to move to the next stage. But in this part of the world, you need to invest on skills, you need to invest on discipline. You need to invest on commitment of the team. You need to take risk with them. You need to deal with their family problems. Sometimes you have given them money. Six months after you've given them money, they decide to buy a car. So you have all these headaches, and these are realities. So um, expecting those guys to give you money back so that you can be able to pay your utility bills and cover your costs and pay for the services might be crazy. So while you're doing this uh, very risky business, you need to look for alternative sources of income or revenue for your space. So, and this approach sometime of wait for equity and membership fees can be very um, unrealistic. Um, so if you wanna raise money, if you wanna build partnership, if you wanna pull finances to your space, you need to understand your position in the ecosystem. Finding financing your space and incubator beyond equity and membership fees. 
means you need to know your role in the ecosystem and think beyond entrepreneur or a community member. So most of us immediately after someone asks us like, um, how are you going to be able to generate money? We jump into saying, ha, 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 there's this entrepreneur, the product is doing so good. So we're going to take equity out of that entrepreneur. Oh, you know what? Uh, we have uh, membership fees every month. Members need to pay money so that we can continue to run our activities. But in this space, in this set of hours, are even able to pay a hundred dollars per month to help you to contribute on the on the on the on the renting and utility cost of the space. And the answer is very few or none at all, depending you are coming which part of Africa. So by defining your role, then it can slowly start to show you what are the potential um, other sources for you to raise money or raise income to support um, your spaces. So we are working in a very vast ecosystem. We have um, donor community, uh, you have entities in the donor communities which are investing on innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship. They constantly launch call for proposals and they're looking for partners to partner with them. So uh, try to identify in your ecosystem uh, in the donor community, who is responsible for innovation, who is responsible for entrepreneurship, what is their strategy, what are they planning to do in 2018, how can you tap into that value chain so that you can also be able to do activities with them. But also in the same ecosystem, you have public sector partners, you have ministries that are working with young people, you have public entities that are fostering innovation and entrepreneurship, you have uh, national like economic empowerment councils, you have investment centers. So try to go and talk to this guy. Uh, move outside your space. Don't just say uh, the government is not supporting us at all. Do they even know that you exist? And um, you have consulting agencies. You have people who are looking for brilliant developers. You have people who are looking for uh, brilliant um, coders, graphic designers, uh, writers. And you have these young guys in your space. They're just coming there, having fun. Could you turn them into some sort of uh, expert by equipping them with skills, by building their capacity? And then you can start to do service outsourcing or skills outsourcing to these consulting agencies. You have research institutions. You guys being hub managers and uh, people who are managing spaces, you definitely know a hub manager in a week how many uh, emails we are receiving for people who are doing researches. Yeah, you can change this as another way for you to be able to raise income for your space. Um, these people, whenever they come to do these researches, they don't do them for free. Someone is supporting them, someone is funding them, uh, and they're consuming your time for free. So uh, try to find a way um, to forge and build a relationship with these guys so that you can be a source of information for them or partnering with them on the ground to be able to run the activities and then they can pay for the service you offer. And um, you have the private sector partners, you have the bank, you have the telecommunication companies, and these guys, sometimes they look to partner with startups, sometimes they look to launch a new product, sometimes they look to learn a challenge and competition, and all those things are not their core businesses. They constantly look for partners to do those things, because if I'm running a bank, then I will not want to put my resources into running a hackathon. Instead, I want to partner with the person who knows how to run a hackathon, that they can run a hackathon on my behalf. That is something which I've been doing for different partners. And then you have the academic institutions, which are constantly piloting new spaces. You can put it as part of your package that we can help you to pilot new innovation spaces. You can develop guidelines. You can develop curriculum. You can develop manuals for them. So there are so many things you can do to all these partners in the ecosystem. And then you have the investors, you have the angel investors and venture capitalists, even though we don't have much of those guys. But again, uh, what effort have you put um, to create a network or even to organize a pitch day for these guys to come to listen to what you guys are doing? And they might be developing interest to support you, whether directly or indirectly. And then the last puzzle, um, piece of the puzzle is the community member. So you can see how big the ecosystem is, but all of us, we're just focusing on draining a community member and an incubator to raise all this money to run our spaces. 
So if we can move our attention a bit to other partners in the ecosystem, then potentially we can be able to raise more money to run our spaces sustainably and even do sustainable businesses out of our incubators and co-creation spaces. So uh, sample activities you can run. Uh, you can run events, talks and forums. You can run hackathon and co-creation session for private sector partners, for public sector partners. You can run workshops and boot camps for like new trending technologies. Could be system AI, could be blockchain, could be Bitcoin, could be IoT. Try just to find a proper partner in the ecosystem which you can partner with so that you can be able to uh, run this session with them. And the potential revenue stream, by running events, talks and forums, then you can have a quality event organizer and then you can do branded events. People can pay for the events. Um, you can do co-creation session. You can run a specific uh, corporate innovation program and invite corporate sector partners to come and take part. So all these are possibilities, and these are possibilities beyond an entrepreneur in your space. These are possibilities outside your space. And then you can design uh, a, a long-term program. You can do community outreach programs, and um, you can do reselling campaign. You can try to uh, work with the community and development partners and try to tell them how innovation can disrupt the way they're spending this crazy amount of money to empower the community. Uh, you can organize trainings and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and an internship program for your partners. So you can do workshops and, and, and boot camps. All these are possibilities. And uh, to be able to do this, the important thing is, and uh, I, I've seen this in most spaces in Africa, is uh, how you set up your space with respect to the, to the programs and activities that you want to do. So I designed one of the spaces in the Boon Innovation Hub when it was starting. Um, and we design it in a form that uh, it allows us to do all the programs we want to do. Uh, we had a specific place for running internship, mentoring, and boot camp activity. We had a specific place for uh, running Mecca, Mecca and electronics program for students to pay to use the fabrication laboratory. And we have a dedicated space for event, co-working, meetup session, and stuff like that. And of course, like any other um, innovation space, you need chillaxing place, you need a coffee bar, you need a meeting room for privacy, you can rent the meeting room, you can rent the site where you're doing programs, um, you can rent your utility, I mean, uh, your facilities in the, in, the, in the maker space. So this gives you multiple uh, avenue for you to be able to raise money for, for your space. But having an amazing space or well-designed space is not enough. You need a diverse team. And it's never about the team. It's about the roles of the team. So you can have very few people with multiple roles, but there are some crucial roles. If you miss them in your space, then it's very, very difficult. The first role is marketing and partnership lead. If there's a person that you need to pay money, is this person um, because this is a person who goes out. This is a person who goes out and meet people. This is a person who goes out, meet people and convince them on what you do. This is a person who gets partnership on board. This is a person who cross deals. So sometimes we focus more on hub management or on issues around technical stuff, um, space operation. And we forgot that we are working with other ecosystem partners and they don't know what we're doing. So we need to focus more on, uh, on, on creating new partnership. And of course, also communication and PR. Some spaces in Africa, they're extremely good on showcasing what they're doing. Uh, sometimes it can be a mobile Monday session, but you might be, feel maybe tech crunch is already in Africa. But again, this is so good because you tend to attract partners from both regional and global to work with them. And you need to rethink on your strategy of making sure people are informed on, uh, on, uh, on, 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 on what you do. So, um, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and um, again, the community manager is a must person because as much as you need to do all this partnership and everything, you need to bring the community very close and you need to have a very strong and passionate community 
to help you with all these things once you want to do a project or you want to partner with a certain partner to do a certain project or activity with that partner. Um, they, again, there is a small like uh, question here just to try to help you reflect on what um, we have been discussing. I know this might be uh, too much to swallow, but I'm trying to uh, go with time. And um, now we are we are we are we are getting into our, um, our 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 final chapter. Our final chapter is about um, beyond tradition. So this this is something that I've been doing for some time now, and it has been working very well for us. So um, from our space, what we do is uh, we are moving from just managing the space. Right now, we are defining ourselves as both uh, venture-backed accelerator, meaning that we're depending on equity and collecting funds from the entrepreneur, but also we are corporate-backed uh, accelerator. We go out, we talk with both private, public partners and development partners to, 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 to do projects on the behalf. So project management can be the main source of income of African hubs, that I believe. So while we are continuing supporting the entrepreneurs, while we are creating beautiful programs to help their growth and helping them to get into the market and building the next businesses, if you want to be sustainable, we can start to think about project management. Because um, as I can tell you, as we all know, there's a lot of, uh, um, there is a very big skills crisis in most of our cities. And most of the time when people want to partner with uh, a strong, competent partner, useful, energetic, they usually lie to our spaces. They usually come to the hubs and say, hey, uh, do you have these kids who can do this for me? Do you have these guys who can do this for me? So instead of just turning that into like some side activity that you do uh, to make your friends happy or your partners happy, you can actually turn it into an actual uh, source of revenue stream and start to think about project ideas and start to think about what partners can you source for those specific project ideas. Um, so there are some different ecosystem partners who can help you to be able to do this. Uh, but the most important skill you, sh you should possess is to be able to know how to source project from client. Um, Sourcing projects from client is not easy. You need to be informed and networked. And to be informed and networked, you need to go to people and time, understand players. You need to understand their strategic, their vision, what are they planning to do in the next two, three, five years, what project are they doing in other countries so that you can replicate into your country. You need to also read a lot, uh, reading newspaper. Uh, and portal, like logging into World Bank and registering on their portal and say, any project around innovation and entrepreneurship, I should be informed. Uh, registering into UNFPA, UNDP, people are going and talk to them, knowing about their next plan or next vision. It's very important. So this is crucial. And I can tell you, I'm not telling you, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not telling you because I haven't tested this yet. I've already tested, and since we started using project management as a tool for revenue stream, uh, we have been able to make more than 1 million USD for the past two years. So we have worked with UKAID, USAID, we have worked with the Hivos Group, we have worked with MCC and PEFA, and right now we are chasing several other projects. And you cannot imagine the power of innovation and entrepreneurship. Any project that is involved in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a creating impact in the community, in ownership, it even creates a larger impact than the current impact that is creating, which of course other partners, development partners, private sector partners, and public partners tend to appreciate that. So another crucial skill you should have is building project team. And this starts from the community. So you need to build a very strong community. Anyone who is just wasting time in your space, you can chase them out and focus for people who are very people with skills and invest on building their skills. So once you secure a project, then you have an in-house team which can be able to deliver. And uh, 
teach them to learn to do quality, but also to work and make sure they deliver. And the most important thing, you should always make sure they work, they learn, and you constant progress. So that when the pro next project comes in, the mistakes you, you, you did in the last project, they don't reappear. So what are the ways to do projects? You can, of course, take consulting fee. You can charge consulting fees in terms of man hours or percentage of the total worth of the project. You can charge for indirect expenses. So some projects are not allowed fees, but they have the indirect budget, which you could tap into to cover operational cost of your space. So you can be involved in a project which is ready to cover your operational cost for three years. You can decide to be a custodian organization, so you adapt to the project after the project end and continue to enjoy the fruits of the project. This is mostly for income generating projects. And then you can form consortiums, of course, partners with people in the ecosystem and then um, work with them to, to run for projects. So these are sample projects that we are currently running. One of them is called Data Zetu. We are running it with, uh, with uh, some several other local and international partners, and it is funded by MCC and PEPFAR. There's a project that we are running with, um, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, UNFPA and UK Aid. It's called Amua Accelerator. And then there's another project we're running with, uh, uh, with UK. It's funded by UK Aid. It's called uh, Mawazo Challenge. So again, there's a small uh, like questions here for you guys to check and to check whether you've captured most of the things that I've been saying and you can reflect um, on what I've been talking. Uh, but for me, um, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share from my experience. Um, so again, um, English is not my mother tongue language. I speak Swahili most of the time. So sorry for those who are not able to capture what I was saying because of my language failure. But uh, I believe with this presentation and some of the course material that I'll be sending to you guys, you'll be able to learn and explore more. And again, I would love to hear your feedback um, because I'm also learning on what you guys are doing on the other side, like how you're managing projects, the challenges and opportunities which are there and for potential to collaborate. Thank you so much. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at J4. Um, um, okay, I've been just told that we have some questions. Um, I'll, I'll start to respond to the questions. Uh, one minute. Okay. So you can email me for follow-up questions. Of course, I'll address some of the questions that you guys have shown right now. And we can also continue the conversation on Twitter at J4 Tambarike. And again, this presentation will be available for you guys to download and use it in the future. Thank you so much. So let me jump into your questions. OK. OK. So um, I'm seeing three questions now. There's a question from THA. What key skills for an innovation space and for an incubator? While considering the fact that one person can play many roles or have many skills, so in, in my presentation, I've, I have, uh, I have I've mentioned some of the skills. If I can go very quick through the slides. Um, yeah, again, uh, so communication in PR person is key to have. Since if you want to manage projects, then you, you will be managing a lot of funds. Then you need a, fi a proper finance and administration person. Uh, you need a very proper program design person and, and events person. You need a technical lead person. Uh, who can just supervise technical staff. Of course, operation and security staff is key. So those are some of the key um, roles you can have in your team. And of course, you can assign multiple roles to one person. There's another question here from NTH again. Um, is it recommended adapted size for an incubator concerning the space and function? Are there minimal function to get as being considering are there minimal functions to get as being considering as an incubator? So it it highly depends on um, on a, on a, on a, it it highly depend on a, it highly depend on 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 the on the service you want to run uh, because the service that you're running tend to define how you design your space. So if you're running an incubator, 
then there's a way to design it. If it's a co-creation space and then you're not focusing on actually incubating the ideas, then there's a way to put it. But again, as I said, you can, learn, you can write to me a, a more detailed question. There's a question from Christina. Wow, <laughs> this is something. So Christina used to work with me four or five years back. So what role, if any, should the donors play in starting, supporting, or running the incubators? This is a very good question. So Christina used to work with Tanzai ICT, and they were funding Boone Innovation Hub when they were starting. I think one of the key roles that uh, donors should play is to make sure as much as they love to fund the spaces, but they plan for sustainability from day one. Because most of the spaces which have received uh, uh, initial funding support from donors, once the funding support stops, there's a lot of problem which comes out because there was no very um, clear plan from the beginning in terms of how are you going to run the space of um, or otherwise supporting the ecosystem. In terms of supporting the ecosystem, what we expect from donors is not to start new innovation spaces, but to support the existing ones. So if let's say UNICEF want to run the UNICEF innovation space, instead of building a new space and starting to run their own activity, they can look for an existing space in the ecosystem, capacitate that space, and then work together with that space. Because what we need is for uh, donors to partner with this space so that you can be able to maximize the signage instead of people working in silos. And uh, there's another question, what in your view is the best way for them to participate? So the best way for them to participate, again, um, is, 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 as I believe is they can participate as funder, they can participate in terms of building capacity of these spaces. They can participate in terms of, since the government tend to listen to donors a lot, to try to help them understand the importance of having these spaces in terms of rebuilding and reshaping the, 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 the African continent. So uh, I don't know if I've managed to answer your question properly. Thank you so much, guys, for listening to me. Um, there's one new question here, let me check it. So according to different financing strategy, many of our incubators are confronted the management of time between activity for the community and financial programs or generating activities of income because the cooperation of the enterprise will remain now out of work. How to ensure a good balance? Eva, this is a very good question. <laughs> so, some spaces have adapted or more having a specific uh, wing for just serving the community, a dot org wing which operates as an organization, and then having a wing which is purely commercial for just running businesses. That's one of the models you can adapt. So you split the team between the two. You guys focus just on entrepreneurs, and you guys just focus on. Uh, on corporate partners. So that's, that's one way of, uh, of, of doing it. Um, the, the other way around is that um, while you are working with the same community of uh, innovators and entrepreneurs, you capacitate them, you build their skills as much as they're building their businesses and establishing their ventures, but you can make sure they possess skills to allow you to work with other corporate partners. There's another question here. In your presentation, you have talked about some Western ways of raising funds, like equity that cannot work in Africa. Do you think there's a need to define hubs in African way? Yeah, we're already defining hubs in African way. That's why we're exploring uh, new ways of financing tech hubs in Africa. Because if um, equity and venture financing is not working very well for us, then we can start to tap in into other models. Of course, the only thing we should do we should stick with the same vision of just making sure we create strong, competent entrepreneurs who can bring into the market competent products that can serve not only the content, but even the global market. So there is no any other new question here. Yeah, so we still have 10 minutes left.
Okay, so again, um, we can continue this uh, conversation via Twitter, or oh, please feel free to write me an email, and I will make this document open source. So anyone with a comment, or you want to update it, or you want to add any edits, please feel free to do it so that we can continue support our ecosystem so much. Okay, there's a new question here. Let me reply to it, we still have time. What kind of part of it? Okay, that's a very good question. So for example, uh, some of the partnership with corporate. Uh, we have worked with uh, CIPESA, the Open Net Africa, uh, we've done a couple of projects on their behalf on issues around um, cyber security. So we run clinics for them, we run boot camps for them. That is one of the partnership. But also we have worked with GSMA uh, when they were doing their GSMA African chapter. We we took the um, opportunity to run a social media campaign for them to recruit startup with them as part of the GSMA Jam, uh, Jam 360 program. Um, we have also worked with several other partners in terms of helping them to launch product and bring their product into the market. But on the development partner side, we have worked with so many partners right now. Um, we have worked with uh, DMM Africa, which is Japanese uh, investment firm looking to invest in Africa. We organized the Africa Business Idea Cup for five countries in which the main event was happening in Tanzania. So those are the kind of um, corporate partnership we've been having. Great, so there is... Um, there is a link to the world. Uh, there is a link to the to the a uh, Google Doc. That Google Doc carries uh, information about this cause, links, the objective of the cause, the survey and the syllabus, and of course the link on where you can get um, to download the presentation. Uh, I'm sharing the link with you guys via the chat box. Let me see. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you can see the link in the chat box. I just shared it with you guys. So uh, that link will give you um, like all the information I've been saying here, and then. Feel free to ask more questions after um, afterward. So we are remaining. Okay, let me check. There's a new question. Um... Okay, so yeah, I, I can see people are joining into the document. Uh, it, it gave me some overview of uh, what we've been talking about. I think there's one link which is missing. So I will update the missing link actually to this, um, to the presentation. I think it's missing there. But again, so please, all the information will be available on, uh, on, on, on that document. A new question here. Uh, uh, um, David is asking us if we are profitable. Um, yes, we are profitable and um, we are not funded by anyone. We are profitable through projects that we are managing uh, for partners. So we are, we are, yes, we are profitable at least for the past two years of our operation. So we are looking for a more sustainable business model, but at least for now our numbers are okay. Okay. 
Okay. So again, as I said, um, thank you so much, guys, and uh, we'll make this document public for everyone to access it. And of course, if you have comment or if you have your personal experience, there's two ways to do it. You can either contribute on the Google Doc link, which I've just shared, and add your comment and update there so that we can all be able to see it. Or you can uh, you can you can of course email me or continue the conversation with me on 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 Twitter. I'll be at least available for the next half an hour to reply to your tweets. Hi, Jamani. Hello, how are you? Fine. Thank you so, so much, Jamani. Hello. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Okay. Thank you're breaking. But... Can you hear me? You're better? welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah I can hear you then... now. Okay. And to everyone who joined in, thank you so much. I hope you have been able to learn a lot. Um, the webinar continues tomorrow, same time. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow's webinar will be oh, okay. on implementing a mentoring program with Bernard Chira. Mm -hmm. And Okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to send that email to Germany or to the AfriLabs team, and you can also join the conversation on the Word document. So thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, guys, for taking your time to listen to me. Thank you. So that's it.